Hi, and welcome to this video on using ArcGIS Online and especially how we can use ArcGIS Pro to set up a project, put this project into ArcGIS Online, and then from ArcGIS Online access it from a mobile device using Arc Collector. So we can go out and do data collection in the field. So to start with, I have um, opened Arc GIS Pro, and um, this time there are some things we have to be aware of. First of all, it's important that we are signed in to uh, Arc GIS Online, which is this one up here. At the moment, I'm not signed in, so I just simply click the sign in and then sign in. So once we've signed in, you can see here that I'm signed in with my credentials and um, I'm ready to go. I have uh, started on the fresh, so I have no previous projects. And what I want to do is I want to start a new project from blank template. So I just start the blank template and I'll call this project Art in Space. So what we want to do What we want to do is that we want to use the project <coughs> to go out into the field and collect and register public art. So um, once the project has started, we have the normal art GIS project environment. And uh, remember from the video about using art GIS, we have our databases. And in the database, we have a default database for this project. In this project, or in this database, I will now create a new feature class, so what we will call a relation in general relationship modeling. modeling. Uh, and uh, I will then start the creation of my project here by saying what should this feature class would be called art. And it will probably be points. Um, that, of course, could be a polygon art also, but let's say that this is finished like this. Um, next thing we want to do is that we will uh, enter, oh, sorry. Uh, enter a attribute so um, fill in here where what the field is so what work they call fields up here uh, I will call it for um, type uh, I will probably have a description And I might probably also want to know uh, here what who the artist is. So fill in these elements. I can go next right here, and I choose a coordinate system. Um, we can browse the coordinate system. Um, collapsing them and um, okay so we have projected and geographic or if we know something about the name or even better the ESPG code we can type that so I know that this is 25832 that's ESPG code for the coordinate system we use in Denmark typically so I choose that I go next I will leave these alone, so I'll just go next again, and next, and next, so leaving all these defaults, and I'm now finished, so I can press finish down here. So, in my geodatabase, I now have this art feature class, and if I uh, right click on it and go down to the bottom almost here, 
here and say I want to edit the metadata. This can bring them up. I can say this is a uh, IMC project. It's a demo. And it's about art. In no, that's about art. Uh, so that's my tags. I'll go down here and uh, in the projects and I'm say um, mapping art in public space. <coughs> so these were the only required elements. So I just save my metadata. Um, normally I say that it's just practical to have um, metadata but in this case we do not type these metadata in information in in our um, GIS Pro you'll have to do it afterwards in uh, ArcGIS Online so you might as well do it here and then um, have it so we will save it and I can close this one and um, I can then add so I just click on the layer name and uh, and say add to a new map so we end up here so this is our project and I think I'll just uh, start out with, uh, with working around the university campus for the fun of it um, so around here so uh, that's probably fine for this purpose so um, the net we can do the next in different ways I find it easiest simply <coughs> to start out by creating some dummy data set and use that to have our symbology um, so different colors for different types of art. Symbology is important here because once we go to our mobile device, we need the symbology in order to s choose the different um, types of art we can register. And this concept of having a template that in ArcGIS Pro, once we have added symbology to a layer, it will automatically become a template so we can easily choose the different types of data we want to register so i'll simply start out by um, creating some data points so i'll go to edit up here and i'll choose create so this one here and uh, there's no template at the moment the only template is just a red dot so i'll just create my art and I'll just make some arts out here. So what I would like to do is also I just want to type in the different um, types of, uh, of art we have here under type. So I'll just put this here, here. So this is a statue. Statue. Uh, just put press enter to make sure it's registered. Don't want to put a description in. Make a new one. This is a mural. Um, and I'll make a new one. This is um, the destination. And uh, finally, I'll just make a other one. So we can, if we have something that's not in these three different types of art, we can use other, and then you can put it into the script for this. <coughs> so I've now made my uh, three types of four types of what we call other of my um, of my um, different types of. Um, of art. 
So <clears throat> once I've done this, I can go back to my content. I can right click on my art here. Sorry. So I'll go up to this place here, art, and I'll right click on it and I will say symbology. So symbology there. Um, and uh, choose that. And here, where it says a single symbol, up here, I will change that to unique values. And in which field I'll use, so here, I will change it, to, so yeah, I'll leave it as, as type. And I'll just choose a bit more uh, funny or easy readable colors. So let's choose something like this. And um, I might as well get rid of this one attribute. I don't really need that anymore. And uh, I'll press this as add all values. So we'll scan through and assign different colors based on my different types. So I have my statue, my arm, my mule, and my installation. If I also want to, now they're just made as dots of different color, I can also, if I just simply click on a symbol, so click here, and uh, choose, I can choose from this uh, gallery, they call it, or I can go to the property, where I can change the size, maybe I want them a bit bigger. Where was all this one, sorry. <coughs> here, so it was here on the layer. And here I can change, so I just want this as triangles, sorry. So um, go back to my symbology. Uh, hopefully now this one has changed. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So now that's changed. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to change my statue. So I'll change that to a, uh, let's say, a cross. And also make that a wee bit bigger. So that's changed. Um, what's one back? Okay, I'll, uh, and I want my arms also to change to a uh, I'll change like that star here. So we can modify all our things so they are nice and easy to read on our tablet when we start doing our field work. So once I've finished with this, um, I can matter of fact just go in and uh, choose the selection tool. Let's say to select so up here. I'll choose a selection tool and I'll choose a rectangle. I'll drag across my data set. Like that, so they're all selected. And I'll just delete them. Because these were just in order to create my um, symbology for my layers here. So I'm finished with symbology creation. I've got my layers here. And that's really all I need. So, I'm now ready to take this data and push it up to ArcGIS Online. I do that by right clicking on the layer, not in my create features, but in my content. Yeah, so I right click on my layer here and go down to sharing. So down here, that's just sharing. And I'll choose this as share as a web layer. It will now go in and it can read these 
uh, description and the tags I created earlier in the metadata. Uh, I want to share them as features, so I'll leave this one as it is here, feature. Um, it, I can decide where I want to place it on my uh, ArcGIS Online, and I want to share it with people that are in the course group, courses in Bingley. So I've now done all of these things, and I can say publish. That's fine, that's, that's all on share saved edits, but doesn't matter, just OK. And it now does the loading of the data to ArcGIS Online. And matter of fact, I'm now more or less finished using ArcGIS Pro. So now that it's finished, it has a little tick mark saying it's loaded up. So I'm basically finished with that map. I'll just be using it again later, so I'll just close it or minimize it. But 